Welcome to this one hour English lesson. Today, you're going to learn a lot of advanced vocabulary to help you sound fluent and professional and express your ideas like a native English speaker. Now, because this is a long lesson, what I've done is I've divided it into individual sections. So first, you'll review a section and learn some advanced vocabulary, and then you'll complete a quiz to make sure you really know how to use what you just learned and then you'll continue on and repeat this for the entire lesson. So you'll complete many quizzes along the way. Welcome back to J4's English Training. Of course, I'm Jennifer and this is your place to become a fluent, confident English speaker. Let's get started. First, let's talk about how to use would rather, what it means, and the advanced ways you can use this in your speech. So let's jump onto my computer and I'll explain exactly how to use this. So here our structure is subject plus would rather. And we use this to show that you prefer to have or do one thing more than another. So let's see this in some example sentences. Do you want to watch a movie tonight? Okay, so this is one option, but you want to do something else more. So you can reply back and say, I'd rather play a game. So notice, subject, would, this is commonly going to be a contraction, by a native speaker at least, and I encourage you to use the contraction as well. I'd rather, and now what do we have? Base verb. I'd rather play a game. So we have our two activities, watch a movie, play a game, and they want to do this one more than this one. Another example, should we clean out the garage tonight? I'd rather do it tomorrow. So this is a very polite expression and it's a nice way to decline an offer or an invitation. So here our choices are tonight or tomorrow. And remember, subject would rather base verb. Here's how it's commonly used in a question form. Would you rather give the presentation or answer the questions. So here are the two tasks, give presentation, answer the questions. So your colleague wants to know which one you want more. So notice in question form, we start with would, subject, rather, and then we have give, the base verb. So the only thing we're in do doing is inverting the subject and would. Now, in question form, this is actually a very common game we play. And the game is called, Would You Rather? We play this game when we're bored, when you're stuck somewhere, like you're stuck at an airport and you're bored and you wanna pass the time, you can play the game, Would You Rather? So here's the purpose of the game. You give someone a situation that's really funny or bizarre or strange or weird. So here, would you rather your only mode of transportation be a donkey or a giraffe? So this is it, no cars, no boats, no planes. The only choice you have is a donkey or a giraffe. So the person will answer and then they have to give their reason why. And of course it creates some fun conversation, you have some laughs and it's a good way to pass the time. And then after this person answers, they have to ask the next question and think of a really funny would you rather. So that's what the game is called, would you rather. So to answer this, you could simply say, I'd rather ride a donkey, and then you can give your answer, because. Notice, subject, would, rather, base verb. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers.
Now let's talk about how to use as far as. First, you need to know that there are two very different meanings and they don't relate to each other, okay? So let's start with meaning number one. And this is going to be the most common way that you would use as far as, as far as I'm concerned. And that's the meaning. Okay, so as far as, in our first meaning, it means to the degree or to the extent, okay? Now, this will make more sense if we just look at an example sentence because it's really hard to explain something based on a definition. So let's take a look at a natural example that uses this expression. Here we go. Stranger Things, which is the name of a TV show, if you didn't know. So that's the name of a TV show, Stranger Things, okay? Stranger Things is Netflix's most watched TV show, as far as we know. Now notice how they put, as far as we know, in brackets at the very end of this. So they're saying, to the extent that we know, to the degree that we know, we believe this to be true, okay? So they're saying, we believe based on everything we know. We believe that Stranger Things is Netflix's most watched show. However, I want you to notice that by using as far as we know, they're letting you know that this statement is only based on the information or evidence, statistics, data that they have available. They're letting you know that there's a chance, there's a chance, although, you know, small, but there's still a chance that there could be another show that is actually more watched than Stranger Things. So by using, as far as we know, it's like they're giving themselves the opportunity to be wrong. If someone else comes and says, actually, Game of Thrones is Netflix's most watched show, and they give you the data, the information, the evidence, the statistics to prove that, then they would say, oh, okay, we believe you, because their statement was only based on as far as they know. Now you'll notice here they put this expression right at the end in brackets, almost like an afterthought. But let me give you some examples of the most common way that you can use this in your speech. And this is going to sound very fluent, very advanced, and very natural as well. As far as I'm concerned, we use this to express our opinion. So you say, as far as I'm concerned, there's a comma, so take a little pause. As far as I'm concerned, Stranger Things is the best show on Netflix. So after this expression, you simply state your opinion. So let's stop right here and practice this. So think about what your opinion could be after, as far as I'm concerned. It could be any opinion, anything that you think, okay? So pause the video if you need, think of one, and then put it in the comments. As far as I'm concerned, and then put it in the comments, okay? And again, by using this, you're letting the person know that this is just based on your opinion. You're not stating a universal fact. There could definitely be a different opinion or there could definitely be information available that goes against what you just said. Now, in addition to as far as I'm concerned, we have some other expressions that you can use in exactly the same way. So you could also say, as far as I know, just like our original example, remember there was as far as we know. So you can definitely change the subject as far as they know, as far as my boss knows. So think about different subjects as well. As far as we know, and then same thing, add the information. As far as I can tell, and as far as I can remember, and then state your information. So these are used in exactly the same way. 
as far as I'm concerned, is the most common, followed by as far as I know. So before we move on to the second meaning, make sure you pause and put your example in the comments. You really need to practice this before we move on. So take the time and put it in the comments. Okay, now let's talk about meaning number two. This is a completely different meaning, okay? And we use as far as to talk about distance physical distance, okay? Now, as far as, you can think of it as the maximum point, okay? But what you need to know is that it includes the entire area from your original point to the maximum point, the farthest point, and it includes everything in that area would be as far as in terms of distance. So again, it's easiest to understand this when you see a real world example. So let's take a look at this example. 4.5 magnitude earthquake shakes Bay Area felt as far as South Bay. Okay, so to be honest, I don't know where the Bay Area is and I don't know where South Bay is. That's not really important if you know where these places are on a map. But we have two places, right? Our starting point is, where's our starting point? Put it in the comments, Bay Area, okay? So this earthquake was felt in the Bay Area and these other cities, other cities, other cities, other cities, other cities, all the way to the furthest point, which was, what's that furthest point? South Bay. So that's the furthest point. And it includes all of the cities or bays, all the bays from the Bay Area to South Bay. I don't think you're going to use this too much in your daily vocabulary. I can't really think of the last time I use this in my vocabulary, although I use as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know, all the time. So that one is definitely going to be in your vocabulary. But regardless, I want you to get comfortable with this meaning as well. So to give you an example, I could say, I walked as far as the mall. I walked as far as the mall. So here, what's my end point? What's my farthest point? Put it in the comments. I walked as far as the mall. What's the farthest point? Put it in the comments. It's the mall, right? I walked as far as the mall. Now, we don't know where my beginning point was. Let's assume it's home. So it means I walk from home, walk, 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 and I stop at the mall. I didn't go any further. I walked as far as the mall. So remember, you're using as far as and then a location to identify the maximum location, the farthest location. So now it's time to practice this one. So think, you need an ending point, a location, a maximum location. Now, to make it simple, maybe it could be we drove, we walked, we took the train, or we saw, you know, you could see as far as, so hmm, we swam as far as, hmm. So think about something like that and then put your example in the comments, okay? Pause the video if you need, take your time with this. It might not come instantly, because like I said, this isn't the most common structure. I don't really use it in my vocabulary, to be honest. So don't worry if it takes you a little longer to think of an example. When you have one, put it in the comments. All right, so now you know the two different meanings for as far as and you can use it in your vocabulary confidently. Awesome job today. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers.
Now let's talk about how to use as much as. As I said at the beginning, as much as can be used in two very different ways depending on the context. And you're going to learn how to use both of these ways by the end of the video. So here we go with meaning number one. You can use as much as when you have two different things and you want to say that those two things are equal in amount or degree. Let's take a look at an example sentence. I deserve that promotion as much as she does. As you can see in this example, we have two different things. And we're talking about amount. The amount that I deserve the promotion and what's the other amount? The amount that she deserves the promotion, okay? So let's say the amount that she deserves the promotion is this much. Now, if I want to use as much as, remember, it's equal. So she deserves the promotion this much, I deserve the promotion this much, it's equal. I deserve the promotion as much as she does. Let me give you another example and then I'll get you to try your own example sentence. Okay. I could say that Jose participated in the conference as much as Maria did. Okay, so here we have amount of participation or the degree to which Maria participated and Jose participated. But you might just want to think of them in terms of amount. So Jose participated in the conference this much, I can't really make it different in sizes, this much, and Maria participated in the conference this much. They're equal. Let me give you one more example, and I'll make it an easy example that everyone can understand. You ate as much cake as I did. Okay, so we have the amount of cake that you ate, the amount of cake that I ate, and they are equal, right? Now, look at the sentence structure. What do you notice that's a little bit different here? Hmm, you ate as much cake as I did. So notice here, I've added in the something. So ate is a verb, right? But if I want to specify ate what, if I want to add the something, look at the placement here. As much mm, something as, okay? So that's when you're including a noun. And the purpose of that just would be to specify ate what. I could leave out cake. I can leave that something out and I could simply say, I ate as much as you did. Now, the only difference here is that I'm specifying cake, right? But if cake is on the table, it's obvious based on context that we're talking about cake. I don't necessarily need to include that in the sentence, but I wanted you to be aware of that sentence structure when we include a something. So now you know how to use the first meaning of as much as. And remember, we have two things and they are equal in amount or degree. So now it's your turn to practice. I want you to think of an example using as much as and put your example in the comments. I think you can have a lot of fun thinking of an example for this one. So put your example in the comments. Did you get it in the comments? Okay, great. Now let's move on to meaning number two. As much as in our second meaning, you can think of it more in terms of although, regardless of or despite how much. That probably doesn't give you much information, does it? So as always, it's easier to just see this in an example. I could say, as much as I want to stay, I have to go. Notice here, as much as is at the very beginning of our sentence, okay? As much as I want to stay, I have to go. 
Now, you can think of this as although. Although I want to stay, I have to go. Now, what does this mean? Basically, we can think of them as two individual sentences. I want to stay, I have to go. Okay, those are two individual sentences. And then we're just combining them together using as much as at the very beginning. There's an easy way that this will make sense for you. And that's by using but. You're most likely familiar with but is one of the first transition words that students learn. So you can think of this as I want to stay, but I have to go. That could be one way that you combine these two sentences into one using the transition word but, okay? And notice there's a contrast here. I want to stay. That's a positive, right? I have to go. That's a negative. So when we use but, there's always a positive and a negative. Now, we're using as much as in exactly the same way is simply the sentence structure that's changing here. So remember, we're using as much as at the very beginning of the sentence. As much as I want to stay, comma, I have to go. Another example, as much as I'd love to help you, I can't. Now, this is a very common way that we may decline to do something politely. I'm letting you know, I want to help you, I can't help you. So we have that contrast, right? A positive, I want to help you, but then we have a negative, I can't help you. So we could combine those sentences with but, I want to help you, but I can't. That might be a, the more familiar structure to you. So this is just an alternative way to form that. And I'll be honest, it does sound more advanced using this structure. Now remember, as much as at the very beginning. As much as I want to help you, I can't. So when you hear as much as, you know that there's going to be a contrast. So when someone says, as much as I want to help you, even if they don't say the end part, I know they're not going to help me because that's how we use as much as is with a contrast. So just keep that in mind. It can be a polite way to decline doing something. For example, you could use it as a polite way to decline an invitation to a party. Your friend invites you to a party and you can say, as much as I'd love to go, I can't. So as much as I'd love to, that's the positive, right? I want to go to the party. But then the negative is, I can't, I'm busy, I have to work, I have a deadline, I don't have a way to get there, whatever the reason is. As much as I'd love to go, I can't. So that could be a polite way to decline an invitation. So now you try, try using this advanced structure where you need a contrast, okay? And remember that placement as much as is going to be at the very beginning. So pause the video now if you need, think of your example and then leave it in the comments. This is definitely an advanced structure that's going to make you sound very fluent and very advanced in English. So you need to practice this. And I'm really excited to read your example in the comments. So make sure you take the time to put your example in the comments so you remember how to use this structure. All right, so now you know two different ways that you can use as much as on a daily basis in your vocabulary. Adding this to your vocabulary is really going to help you sound fluent and natural in English. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers. Now let's talk about how to use as soon as and as long as. Let's start with as soon as. 
you can think of this as a time reference, okay? We're talking about time. And as soon as, you can translate that to immediately after, okay? Immediately after something happens. For example, call your mother as soon as you get home. Okay, so remember, we can think of as soon as, as immediately after. So immediately after you get home, call your mother. So imagine you're walking home, you open your door, you enter your house, okay? Immediately after. So the first thing you're going to do when you get home is call your mother. Call your mother as soon as you get home. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the structure of this is flexible. I can use as soon as to start the sentence and I can say as soon as you get home. As soon as you get home, call your mother. And they mean exactly the same thing. Another example, send me that report as soon as you get the numbers. So immediately after you get the numbers, what are you going to do? You're going to send me the report. Send me the report as soon as you get the numbers. And remember, we can switch the sentence structure as well. So write in the comments below, what would be the alternative way to write this starting with as soon as. So pause the video and write that in the comments below to practice. Did you get it? As soon as you get the numbers. As soon as you get the numbers, send me the report. Now let's talk about as long as. As long as and as soon as are very different. The only thing they share is that they both have as and as, okay? But they're used very differently. Now with as long as, we're offering a condition, okay? This will make sense with an example sentence. So let me give you an example. I'll go to the party as long as you give me a ride, okay? So there's a condition, right? I will only go to the party if you give me a ride. If you don't give me a ride, I won't go to the party. That's the condition. So we use as long as for identifying a condition. I'll go to the party as long as you give me a ride. Now, just like with as soon as, this sentence structure is flexible as well. So think about this, hit pause, and change the sentence structure so we begin with as long as, okay? Put your answer in the comments below. Did you get it? As long as you give me a ride, I'll go to the party. Another example, I'll help you with that report as long as you buy me lunch. So my offer to help you is conditional and I'll only help you if, what? If you buy me lunch, right? That's the as long as, as long as you buy me lunch. I'll help you with that report as long as you buy me lunch. Now again, think about changing that sentence structure hit pause and write the alternative sentence structure in the comments below. Did you get it? As long as you buy me lunch, I'll help you with that report. To summarize, we have two great conjunctions. As soon as, which you can think of immediately after something, and we have as long as, which is used to offer a condition. All right, now you know how to use as soon as and as long as confidently. Now you practice. Make sure you write one example with as soon as and one example with as long as in the comments below. And then change that to the other sentence structure so you get comfortable with both of them. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers.
Now let's talk about how to use as well as. As well as does not mean the same thing as and, okay? And this is where I, I see a lot of students and even sometimes some native English speakers make mistakes. And it's the context, okay? It's the context that you use this expression that has to make sense. And many sentences, you would just use and rather than as well as. So just keep that in mind as I'm explaining this to you. So, as well as, what does this mean? You can think of this to mean as not only Y, but also X, okay? Not only, but also. So in that case, it doesn't just mean and. And just means and. As well as means not only, but also. And because of that, because it has this more specific usage, when you use this is going to be way more limited than when you simply just say and, okay? Now, let's look at the structure here. To form this, we would have x as well as y, okay? So we would need to put information in for x and y. But remember my explanation, I said not only y, but also x, okay? The order of that is important because we're saying not only y, so this item, whatever y is, but also x, and we're emphasizing x. That's the important thing. We're emphasizing x, and x is the one that comes first. Now, I promise this is going to make sense when you see it in an example. So let's take a look at an example. I could say, we're accepting applications from Harvard as well as Princeton. Okay, so think about this. From Harvard as well as Princeton. So we have X and Y, right? What's X? Put it in the comments. What's X? The one that comes first. Harvard is X and what's Y? Put it in the comments, what's y? y equals Princeton. The second one is y. In this case, x, Harvard, y, Princeton, okay? So not only y, not only Princeton, but also Harvard, but also x. And remember, which one are we emphasizing? Let me know in the comments. Are we emphasizing x? Harvard? Or are we emphasizing Y, Princeton? Hmm, put it in the comments. Emphasizing which one, X or Y? Put it in the comments. We're emphasizing X. We're emphasizing Harvard. We're emphasizing the first one. And that's the important thing because I could say, we're accepting applications from Harvard and Princeton. I could simply use and, okay? But the meaning is slightly different. Slightly different, but an important distinction. When we use and, we see those, the X and the Y, we see them as equal. Equal in terms of importance, okay? But when we use as well as, we're emphasizing X for whatever reason. So that's an important distinction. That's why I said at the beginning that in many cases, you're just going to use and. You're going to mention two items that you do and they're going to have equal importance, okay? Now, using our same example, why, the thing that comes at the end, can be plural. And in many cases, it will be plural, okay? So I could say, we're accepting applications from Harvard, X, that's still Harvard. We're accepting applications from Harvard as well as other universities. So other universities, why? That's plural. And remember, it's like saying, not only are we accepting applications from other universities, but we're also accepting applications from Harvard with emphasis 
on Harvard. So in both these examples, the one where I had a singular Princeton and then plural other universities, we're emphasizing Harvard in both of those examples. So now it's your turn to practice in the comments. I want you to form a sentence using as well as. Remember, we need, in terms of structure, we need X as well as Y. And remember, it means not only Y, but also X with emphasis on X, right? So put an example sentence in the comments. Now, after you do that, and honestly, this will probably take you a little while to think of the correct context that you need for that. Now, after that, I also want you to just put a simple sentence using and, okay? So X and Y, and there's going to be equal emphasis on X and Y. And I want you to do that so you can really see them side by side, see as well as and see and side by side and understand how they're not the same thing and you can't use them interchangeably. And remember, like I said at the beginning, most likely you're going to form sentences with and. That's going to be way more commonly used in your daily vocabulary than as well as. Honestly, I don't remember the last time I really formed a sentence with as well as. So and is going to be very much a part of your daily vocabulary where I don't think that as well as will be. But still, it's great to understand this distinction. Even if you don't use as well as very often, most likely you're going to see it being used, especially in a more academic style of writing. And in that case, you can understand how it isn't the same as and. So for me, some simple sentences I could say with and would simply be, I like, and then you name two things, or I want, and then you can name two things, or I bought, and then you can name two things, right? I like singing and dancing. I want a coffee and a croissant. I bought a shirt and a sweater. Now taking one of those examples, I could say, the sweater I bought was beautiful as well as comfortable. So here, remember, not only Y, comfortable, but also X with emphasis on the X, okay? So really get comfortable with seeing and, and as well as side by side. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers. Now let's talk about how to use as well, also, and to. Well, first of all, let's talk about what these three words mean. All three are adverbs and all three have the same meaning. They mean in addition. So we use them when you're adding another point or when you're emphasizing on a point with additional information. Now, these three words may confuse you because although they have the same meaning, how they're used according to English sentence structure, specifically where they are in a sentence, their position within a sentence can change. So that's what we'll mainly be talking about in this lesson. So let's talk about when you can use all three interchangeably so it doesn't matter which one you use, they have the exact same meaning. That will happen when you use them at the end of a sentence. Now remember that the meaning is in addition, we use it to add an additional point. So because of that, there's most likely going to be two sentences. Sentence one, and then sentence two, which adds addi additional information to sentence one, and then we add our adverb at the end of sentence two. For example, I could say, Kara's going to the conference. Ken's going, 
And here at the end of the sentence, I could use as well, also, or too. Anyone is fine. They have no difference in meaning. Although they have no difference in meaning, I would say that as well is most commonly used in spoken English and it sounds the most natural to me. And following that too is also very commonly used in spoken English. It has a little bit more of an informal casual feel but still very commonly used. Now I would say also is the least commonly used in spoken English. However, you can still use it. It's correct. I'm just letting you know how I hear them being used in terms of popularity. Let's take a look at another example where you can use all three at the end of the sentence and they have exactly the same meaning. I could say, I need to update the website and I need to finish the report and then you can use whichever adverb you like in terms of popularity as well to also. Let's talk about when you would only use to. In this case, it would be when you're having a conversation with someone, one person says something and you want to agree with them by saying me too, me too. In this case, it sounds the most natural to use too. Maybe, maybe technically is grammatically correct to say me as well, me also, but it doesn't sound natural and it's not something I hear. So in this case, you should use too, me too. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Let's say that we went to a party last night and I call you and I say, I had so much fun at the party. And you want to agree to this and you can say, me too, me too. Another example, I could say, I had pasta for lunch. Now, if you had pasta for lunch as well, Notice, I can say as well because it's at the end of the sentence. If you had pasta for lunch as well, then you could simply say, me too. I had pasta for lunch. Me too. So in that scenario where you're responding to somebody, then you would just use me too. Now let's talk about also. Also is the least commonly used in spoken English, although it's commonly used in written English. And the placement of also is different from as well and to in the sense that also can be used at the beginning of a sentence. So remember, we still need sentence one and sentence two, but for sentence two, we can start with also, that isn't the case for as well and to. This only applies to also. And you're going to find this more in written English, although you can use this in spoken English as well. And notice I just said as well at the end of the sentence there. Now, when we use it at the beginning of a sentence, it's for the exact same reason. We're emphasizing a point or we're adding additional information to a point. I could say, make sure you wear a sweater. Also, bring a hat. So notice here, I'm connecting these two sentences. Now in sentence two, I'm putting also at the beginning. Now in spoken English, I would commonly say, make sure you wear a sweater and bring a hat as well. So these two sentences have exactly the same meaning, however their structure is different and when they would be used is different because the first one is more commonly used in written English and the second one more common in spoken English. Now you could commonly use also at the beginning of a sentence when you're giving an instruction. So if you have two tasks that you want the person to do, you could identify task one 
and then identify task two, but at the beginning of task two, you would say also. So that would sound like, can you update the website? Also, can you edit the report? Now, if we were going to take this sentence and change it, so our adverb comes at the end, what would that sound like? So try that, try that in exercise, take that, add the adverb at the end and put it in the comments. What does it sound like? Can you update the website and edit the report as well? Or you could use also or to. All three would be correct. All right, so now you know how to use also as well and to at the end of sentences. You know when you can only use me to and you know how to connect two sentences using also at the beginning. That's quite a lot for today, so why don't we end the video here and that will give you time to practice and review what we've covered. So of course, now's your time to practice, so I want you to leave an example in the comments, put one example sentence with the adverb at the end of your sentence and I want you to get comfortable with also at the beginning of your sentence as well. Remember, in both of these cases, you're going to need two sentences or two parts of one sentence, okay? And I can't wait to read your comments. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers. Now let's talk about how to use as well as and as well. You've already learned both of these in this lesson, so now we're just comparing them together. I know they look very similar. However, they have different meanings. They're both adverbs, okay? But first, let's talk about as well. As well, is used when we add an additional piece of information. You can think of it as the same as to. So let's say your friend says, I have to go to the bank. Now, you have to go to the bank. So you have to go to the bank, your friend has to go to the bank. Hmm, so we can use as well. So again, your friend says, I have to go to the bank. You can say, I have to go as well, as well. So here is like saying two. You both have to do the same action. Or let's say it's early in the morning and you go to your favorite cafe for a cup of coffee. So you order and you say, I'll have a coffee. But then you notice those muffins look delicious. So then you add, and a muffin as well, as well. So you can add as well. I'll have a coffee and a muffin as well. So we're adding as well our adverb to the end of a sentence. Notice that sentence structure, the placement is at the end of a sentence and it's used when we're adding an additional point, a point that complements our first point. Now, as well as is used in a different way. The meaning is more advanced, it's more of an advanced grammar topic. The meaning is not only Y, but also X, okay? Not only, but also. For example, I have to go to the bank as well as the store, as well as the store. So notice, not only Y, but also X. Now notice how I'm saying not only Y, but also X. Hmm, it's because we emphasize X. So in this case, our X is bank and the Y is store. Now I'm emphasizing bank. I have to go to the bank as well as the store. Now let's compare that to a simple sentence with as well. I could say, I have to go to the store and I have to go to the bank as well. 
So in this case, I'm adding an additional place I need to go. Remember our placement as well comes at the end of the sentence. Now, the important thing to remember is in this case, I'm not emphasizing one action over the other. They're equal importance, the bank, the store, they're equal. But when I use as well as, the bank is more important. It has more emphasis than the store. I have to go to the bank as well as the store. Now notice the placement with as well as. We use as well as before the second noun. The store is our second noun, as well as the store. But with as well, it's simply at the end, the very end of the sentence. One more example showing both side by side. Let's say I was at the mall yesterday and I could tell my friend, I bought a sweater and a t-shirt as well. Remember, as well, I'm just adding an additional item. I bought a sweater and a t-shirt as well. Now let's say I want to identify two qualities that the sweater has, but I want to emphasize one over the other. I could say the sweater is beautiful as well as comfortable. So two items, beautiful and comfortable, but I'm emphasizing beautiful. The sweater is beautiful as well as comfortable. So now you can see them side by side and understand how they're used differently. And of course, it's your turn to practice. So I want you to do the same thing. Give an example where first you can use as well, and then make a statement where you're identifying two characteristics or two items, two nouns, and you're emphasizing one and use as well as. So put your example in the comments below. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers. And finally, let's talk about how to use worth and worthwhile. Both of these are adjectives and they can be used interchangeably. So in the first example I give you with worth, you can put in worthwhile in all of those examples and it will have the same meaning. So our sentence structure for worth is to be worth doing something. So notice, worth is not a verb, it's an adjective. Our verb is to be, to be worth. And notice I have doing something, why is that? Because doing, it lets you know that when you use a verb, is going to be a gerund verb. So this is a gerund expression, that's very important to know. And what does this mean? It simply means that it's useful or important enough to do it. So the advantages are more than the time, the cost, the energy to do that activity. For example, I could ask a question and I could ask, do you think it's worth attending the conference? Hmm. Do you think it's worth, it is, it's, do you think it's worth attending the conference? So notice my verb attend is in the gerund form, attending, because this is a gerund expression. Do you think it's worth attending the conference? Now as a reply, let's just imagine my reply, I'm going to repeat the full sentence, okay? And I could say, yes, it is, it's, it's worth attending the conference. Now the more common thing to do in this situation is to replace the action with it, okay? Because it's obvious based on context and it sounds very repetitive to repeat it again. So instead of that, I can say, yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. So that's probably what you're used to hearing. It's worth it. It's not worth it. It's a verb to be expression, so to make it negative, I simply use not. It's not worth it. 
it's worth it. We use it because whatever it is has already been identified or it's obvious based on context. That's why you're probably not common hearing it with the gerund form. But when you want to use the verb, it has to be in the gerund. It's not worth attending the conference. Now, remember that I said in this specific case, worth and worthwhile can just be used interchangeably. So it would be, the sentence structure would be to be worthwhile doing something. It's still a verb to be expression. So I might ask you, do you think it's worthwhile flying first class? Because it's a lot more expensive to fly first class. Do you think it's worthwhile flying first class? Worthwhile, and then our gerund, flying. And then my reply would be, absolutely, it's worth it. Because flying first class is awesome. Why wouldn't you do it? It's totally worth it. Now notice in my reply, I didn't use worthwhile. I used worth it. That's because when we use it, I can't say it's worthwhile it. I can't say that. I can say it's worthwhile and end my sentence, or I can say it's worth it. So let's review that again, and I'll do two different replies. Do you think it's worthwhile flying first class? And then using worthwhile as the reply, I can say yes, it's worthwhile. Yes, it's worthwhile flying first class. Or I can say yeah, it's worth it. Now, notice in this case, I have to use it. I can't just say it's worth. I can't do that. I have to identify the something. I have to include the it. It's worth it. It's worth flying first class. So the sentence structure is a little bit different, but the meaning is exactly the same. And when you have the full verb form and you're using the gerund verb, it's exactly the same. Now there's one final structure that we use with worthwhile that we don't use with worth, okay? So this last structure is only with worthwhile. And that structure is to be a, our article, to be a worthwhile, and then we need a noun. So let me give you an example. That was a worthwhile program. That was a worthwhile program. Notice, a program, that's my noun, a program, and then I'm just using worthwhile to describe what type of program it was. That was a worthwhile program. I can't say that was a worth program. I can't say that. So I can say that was a worthwhile program, but if I wanna change the sentence structure a little bit, I can, and I could say that program was worthwhile, or that program was worth it, worth it. Remember, with worth, I need it, but with worthwhile, I don't use it. So we have all three of those. That was a worthwhile program, that program was worthwhile, that program was worth it. Meaning is the same, it's just getting comfortable with the different sentence structures. So now it's your turn to practice. I want you to leave three examples in the comments, one with worth, one with worthwhile, and one with a worthwhile noun. Practice all of those in the comments. Are you ready for your quiz? Here are your questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers. Amazing job in this lesson. Think of all the advanced vocabulary and the correct sentence structure, the advanced sentence structure that you learned today. Which section did you find most helpful? Share that in the comments below and also share your scores from the quizzes in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, 
jforestenglish.com and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying.